My name is Alicia, and in this week's live lesson, we are going to talk about how to explain responsibilities. We're going to focus on talking about your responsibilities and asking other people about their responsibilities. The focus grammar points today will be have to and need to. We're going to cover the positive form, the negative form, and the question-making forms in today's lesson. So, as you join, please, please, please make sure to hit the like button and share this video so that other people can find today's lesson. That would be super, super cool. While we wait for other people to join us live, a couple of super quick announcements. Announcement number one. As always, there's this banner at the bottom of the screen that says free PDF cheat sheets. If you have not checked recently, our team has a lot, a lot, a bunch of free downloadable PDFs for vocabulary practice, for like learning new phrases, for learning idioms, about lots of different topics like cooking, for example. So check these out. If you have not checked recently, this is the page you'll find if you click the link below the video on YouTube or above the video on Facebook. The team has created a lot of new PDFs. So if you have not checked this recently, you can scroll down here on this page and check this part to see which ones are new. So if you've missed any, you can go and pick them up. They're all free. So check this out. You need your name and an email address at EnglishClass101.com if you don't have one already, an account. That's announcement number one. Announcement number two, of course, as always, if you have questions for me, please send them to me for our weekly question and answer series, Ask Alicia. Uh, if you send me your questions on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, comments, whatever, I'm probably not going to see it. There are thousands every day. I probably won't see it. So please send it to me on the official question submission page. This is in the, the YouTube description. There's a link in the YouTube description. Or you can send it to me at EnglishClass101.com slash ask hyphen Alicia. This is an old screenshot from the series. I talked about the differences between especially and specifically. But send me your questions there. Please, please, please. I will definitely read your question. And perhaps I will choose yours. We'll see. <laughs> anyway, send them to me there, please. We're always looking for new questions. Okay, it looks like everything is okay. I see YouTube is up and Facebook is up. Hooray, everybody is here today. Excellent. Hi, uh, what's, oh my gosh, hello everybody on YouTube. Achilles, hi, and RK Gaming, hi. Software from Colombia, Software de Usario, hello from Colombia, welcome. Abdulram Yusuf, hola, hello everybody. Um, okay, I see lots of people on YouTube, good. Facebook, Facebook is also here. Hi Facebook, welcome everybody. Nelson and Cesar and Marlon. Rosa, hello. Imen, Imen, hi. Hassan, good night. Okay, bye. <laughs> All right. Good. Everyone is here. Everything is rolling. If you have not already, please, please, please make sure to hit like and share this video. It helps the algorithm. Uh, it helps us with the algorithm. Okay, let's go to... Actually, I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to like and share the video before I forget. Okay, let's... Okay, I shared it. So let's look at today's lesson topics. Here are today's lesson boards. These are the things we are going to talk about today. So. We are going to begin today with have to and need to, a very basic explanation. And then we are going to talk about positive statements. How do we make positive statements? Next, we'll talk about negative statements and some common issues I see with learners here. And then we're going to finish with questions and one more pattern, um, an advice pattern that we use. Um, uh, with the same grammar point. So let's get into it. Let's begin today's lesson with some positive statements. Okay, so first, have to and need to. What do we use these two grammar points to do? What do we use them for? First, we use them to express responsibilities that come from outside you. So what does this mean? That means, for example, your work, your school, your family, your friends, you have some responsibility outside yourself, yeah? Something outside of you. We use these to express those responsibilities, excuse me, those responsibilities. We can also use this grammar point for advice, but we're not going to focus on this today. Today we're going to focus on responsibility, okay? Then, 
I have this star here. So generally, we use have to and need to in the same way to express responsibilities outside us. We can use the two uh, together, or we can use them interchangeably in the same position, in the same way. But need to can also be used for a strong feeling of responsibility or desire from inside. So sometimes when we feel very strongly about something, and we feel a, like a feeling of responsibility about that thing, we use need to to express that. We're going to talk about this later. We'll see some examples of this later. But usually this one, we use this with emphasis. So we emphasize this with our voice in speech. We can also use this for advice. We're going to talk about this in part three. Okay, so let's put this into practice. Let's uh, start by making some positive statements with this grammar. So, when we make a positive statement with have to and need to, we need to think about our subject. So, there are two groups of subjects here. First, if our subject is I, you, we, or they, we use have to plus infinitive verb or need to plus infinitive verb. So, if you want to express just a general responsibility, you can choose either. It's totally cool. If you really want to emphasize something that's like strong inside you, maybe need to is better. Also, we usually use that uh, need to in more casual situations. Okay? So, we have this group. I have to verb. You have to verb. We need to verb. They need to verb. Okay, so you can send your example sentences in the chat. I'll try to I'll try to check live. Okay, uh, okay. Send me your examples. I'll I'll try to check as they come in. The second group of subjects we have he, she, and it. So in these cases, our verbs change. So he has to verb. She has to verb. It needs to verb, and so on. So please keep in mind, depending on the subject. The verb here changes, all right? Okay, so let's look at some example sentences and then I'll look for your example sentences in the chat. First one, a very basic one. I have to go to the bank. I have to go to the bank. So here we have subject I have to go. Infinitive verb here is go. Reminder, infinitive verb is the base verb form, so no change. If it helps you, another way to think of this is the to verb right here. So I have to written here. So to verb, yeah, that kind of set verb form, okay? So I have to go to the bank. Keep in mind, we often connect these sounds in speech. So not I have to go to the bank. This part, have to, this V sounds like an F. I have to, I have to, and this to becomes like a t have to go to the bank. That's how a native speaker says this sentence. I have to go to the bank. I have to go to the store. That's the speed and that's generally what it sounds like. Okay? Next example. She has to attend the meeting. She has to attend the meeting. So she has to attend the meeting also uses this uh, same pattern but we have a different verb here. Yeah? As we practice. She has to. She has to. So not have to here. She has to attend the meeting. Again, these sounds get a little bit shorter in everyday speech. So not she has to, but she has to. She has to. She has to attend the meeting. That's how it sounds at regular speed. Okay? All right, some examples are coming in. Oh my gosh, there's so many. Okay, I'll start with YouTube. Um, I have to take the trash, uh, take out the trash before uh, 5.30, says Nando. Okay, good. Um, Nohore says, I have to give a piece of advice to my brother. Good. Okay. Achilles says, I need to be fit for my next spring break, spring break vacation. Okay, good. Um, Jonathan says, they have to do the homework to hand in by Monday. Good. Victor says, he has to train a lot to lose weight. Good. Haifa says, I have to sleep early to get a good health. Ah, I have to maybe, I have to go to bed early mm, for it to be healthy maybe is a more natural way to say that. Uh, others, oh my gosh, okay, I'm looking for more. Reina says, I have to read a book to my children. Okay, 
Uh, Sylvia says she has to stop eating. Okay, like maybe in this moment. Good, nice example sentences, YouTube. Facebook, I'm looking for you now, Facebook. Oh my gosh, there's so many ads. Okay, Hassan says, I have to attend this course. Nice one, Hassan, okay. Carlos says, I have to pay attention. Um, I need to improve my English. Maybe remove so from that. I have to pay attention. I need to improve my English. Cesar says, my sister needs to go to the doctor. Good. Milena says, I have to study more. Nice. Okay, good examples so far, everyone. Excellent. I like it. Great. Okay, let's look at our second uh, pair. First, we have to make dinner tonight. We have to make dinner tonight. Okay, so again, have to is here. Here's my verb, make. We have to make dinner tonight. So again, this communicates some responsibility. We have a responsibility to make dinner tonight. Okay? And again, this in speech becomes have to. Have to. We have to make dinner tonight. Last one. He needs to come to the office. He needs to come to the office. So again, this does get a little shorter in speech. So not he needs to, clearly, but he needs to. He needs to. He needs to come to the office. Okay? So these are all ways to express just general responsibilities. Okay? Your example sentences look great, everybody. Nicely done. Okay, some more are coming in. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, there's a lot. Uh, Jesu Lin says, I have to go to work. Carmen says, I had to go to the school, okay? Uh, someone, I can't read your name, sorry, says, I need to have rest, or maybe I need to rest, okay? Um, I have to learn more phrases, says the Pearl 66. Good, okay. Um, Miguel says, I need to buy new sunglasses. Not no uh there, I need to buy new sunglasses, okay? Uh, Yoho says, I have to leave the class. Now? Okay, bye. <laughs> All right, good. Nice examples, everybody. You guys, everybody's doing great with the positive sentences. That sounds super, super good. Okay, let's go uh, to a quick break, and then we'll go to part two, where we'll practice negative sentences. That's the part where sometimes I see a little bit of um, trouble. So, break. Let's take a super quick break. Part one. Nicely done, everybody. Great example sentences. That's super cool. Okay, so we'll take a super quick break. Shift your brain to negative sentence thinking. So, a quick reminder, if you missed it earlier, about this banner at the bottom of the screen. It says, get free PDF cheat sheets. If you have not checked the link uh, below the video if you're watching on YouTube or above the video if you're watching on Facebook, there are a lot of these new PDF sheets that I show you, I show you often, the team created some more. I've shown you many of these before uh, with lots of different topics like sports and leisure activities, but there are lots of new ones, including some conversation practice cheat sheets. So if you have not checked recently, check it out. And if you have not ever checked, if you don't have an account, you can make a free one. You just need your name and your email address, and you can find this uh, from the link below or above the video. So check this out. If You could download all of them. You don't have to choose. So check this out. Uh, if you have not checked this link, you will find it uh, in the description. And this right here at the top is where you can make an account if you do not have one. Okay? All right. That is it for the break. Let's go to part two, negative sentence structures. Um, so if you haven't, please, please, please make sure to hit the like button and share this video so that other people can find today's lesson. All right, let's go to negative statements now. Let's practice um, using have to and need to to make negative statements. So I mentioned this is the part of this grammar where I sometimes see um, some mistakes happen. So let's talk about this. So negative statements with have to and need to. These express no responsibility for something, okay? No responsibility. So that seems pretty easy to understand, right? No responsibility for something. But we use these in situations where there might be an expectation to do the action. So what does that mean? So here's the example I always like to give because one of my students in class used it many years ago. This sentence is grammatically correct. I don't have to drink alcohol at work. This sentence 100% grammatically correct. But this sounds really strange because for most people, 
there's no, there's no expectation to drink alcohol at work, right? Maybe, maybe if you're a bartender, I guess. If you're a bartender or something, okay. But for most people, this is not a regular work expectation, right? Or a school expectation. Like I don't have to drink alcohol in my classroom <laughs> or something. That's very strange, right? So this sounds strange. This use of have to or need to, this sounds really strange because there's no regular or typical expectation for this action, okay? So it's important to use the negative form with something that there's an expectation for. For example, I don't have to wear a uniform at work. So I don't have to wear a uniform at work. This is a common kind of workplace rule, right? I don't have to wear a uniform at work. That's a very common sort of rule. Some places have a uniform or maybe a dress code and so on. So please keep this point in mind, okay? I'll check for your, I'll check for your example sentences here, all right? So the key with this is we use this for reasonably, <laughs> reasonable kind of work and school situations, responsibility situations. Okay, so let's talk about how we make this. So we use, again, the same two groups of subjects. We have I, you, we, and they, and we have he, she, and it, these two groups. So in this section, in the negative section, we do not change have and need here. However, we do change this part. So do not, I've used the reduced form, don't, and does not, does not. These are the words that change in the negative part. So not I don't have, oh, sorry, that was a bad example. <laughs> so not he uh, doesn't has to. No, we don't change this verb here. We change only this one, this helping verb, does, uh, does not. Okay, so let's practice with some example sentences and I will check your examples live. Okay, first, I don't have to go to the bank. I don't have to go to the bank. I have no responsibility to go to the bank. This is okay. Reasonable expectation, right? Reasonable life expectation. I don't have to go to the bank. Okay? At native speed, this sounds like, I don't have to go to the bank. I don't have to go to the bank. So very, very quick. Yeah? Next one. She doesn't have to attend the meeting. She doesn't have to attend the meeting. Here my subject is she. So the next word needs to be doesn't, not don't. She doesn't have to attend is the infinitive verb. She doesn't have to attend the meeting. In native speed, this sounds like she doesn't have to attend the meeting. It's very quick. Doesn't have to attend. So again, this have to gets very, very short. Have to, have to. Okay? Next, we don't have to make dinner tonight. We don't have to make dinner tonight. So my subject is we. We don't have to make dinner tonight. All right? And last one, a need to example. He doesn't need to come to the office. He doesn't need to come to the office. So again, subject is he. Next, we follow in the negative pattern with doesn't. He doesn't need to come to the office. Okay? So here, this is how we make negative sentences. Again, all of these are situations that are kind of reasonable everyday life situations. Okay? So I'm going to come and look for your example sentences now. There are a lot. Oh my gosh. Okay, Karina says... She doesn't have to make lunch tomorrow. Good, okay. Um, Achilles writes, she doesn't have to fail her test. So does she have some responsibility to fail her test? That's an example that seems kind of unreasonable. Usually the expectation is to pass the test, right? Hmm. So be careful there. Make sure it's something reasonable. We have an expectation. We think that there's a responsibility, okay? Uh, some examples, um, Jonathan says, I don't have to do my homework today, but tomorrow I need to do it to hand in. Okay, good, okay. Um, hmm, I'm, Heidi, I'm not sure, quite sure what the sentence means. He doesn't have to pay the wrong bill? What do you mean wrong bill? Maybe can you, uh, update your example sentence? 
Um, Ahmed says he doesn't need to add sugar to his coffee. Okay, grammatically correct. Yeah, looks good. Um, what's up, Jubar? Hello. Uh, Haifa, she doesn't need to go to school uh, because she is sick. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe in that case, maybe she shouldn't go to school because she's sick. Maybe it's a different way to say that. Okay. Um, you guys are sending some kind of weird example sentences. Remember, we're looking for reasonable expectations, reasonable life expectations, yeah? So you don't have to think of a crazy situation to use this grammar point. Facebook, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Facebook, what's going on over here? Your examples. Uh, Rota says, she doesn't have to study French today. Good, okay. Nang says, I don't need to do that. Good. Floria says, I don't have to cook dinner tonight. Perfect, nice one. Uh, Cesar says, I don't have to make a cake today. Okay. <laughs> Do you have to make a cake tomorrow? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Um, Milena says, we don't have to get up early today. Nice one. Okay. Others. Uh, Sheer says, she doesn't have to speak. Okay. Good. Um, other people. Jason says, we don't have to go to the office. Nice. Okay. Um, Al Durant, Ludovic, I think. I, I don't have to go to work tomorrow. Good. Okay. Very nice ones. Nicely done, everybody. So again, maybe for some of you, this one. Remember, we use this grammar point for reasonable expectations, yeah? So if you write like a crazy idea, like I don't have to go to Mars, <laughs> like, well, of course, <laughs> but me too. I, I also, me neither. I don't have to go to Mars either. So think about these reasonable expectations. That's what we use this grammar point to express, okay? All right, very nice examples, everybody. Uh, I like I like your grammar. Nice grammar, nice grammar. Okay, let's do one more super quick break, and then we'll go to question points and a note about advice patterns with this grammar. So quickly, if you missed it earlier, there are free PDFs for you to download from the link below the video if you're watching on YouTube, and above the video if you're watching on Facebook, you can find a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of new vocabulary and phrase study PDFs. Oh my gosh, so many. So you can choose the topic that's interesting to you. This is singing, I know, but it's really about music. So you can choose the topic that's interesting for you or choose a vocabulary um, theme that you want to study. There's a business English one too, so check this out. There's some expressions for meetings on the back of this. Okay, all right, let's go to the last point or the last part for today's lesson. If you haven't already, please make sure to hit the like button, yeah, and share this video. It helps others to find our lessons. Okay, let's go to questions now. So, how do we make questions with this grammar point and what are they used to do? So, Questions. We use have to and need to questions to ask about and confirm responsibilities. So confirm means to check, right? So for example, if you want to check your responsibility with someone else, you use a question like this. So this pattern I've created here, there's a lot happening here. So to make a question first, to make an information question, you need to get information from someone else. We can use this pattern. WH question starts here. For example, who, what, where, when, why, how as well. So a WH question plus do or does, depending on the subject, right? We practiced this earlier with our two groups of subjects, yeah? So keep that in mind, the same rule. So. Subject plus have to or need to, it's up to you, have to, verb, okay? So we use this to get some information, what, where, when, why, etc. However, if you want to make a yes or no question, like to confirm your responsibility, just take this part off. Does subject have to verb? Do subject have to verb? Hmm. So, let's take a look at some examples of this then. So, first one, an information question. What do I need to do? What do I need to do? So, for example, for this task, what do I need to do? So, in other words, what is my responsibility? What do we need to do? I'm sorry, what do I need to do? Okay. 
Next one. Where does she have to go? Where does she have to go? Okay, so let's break these down. We have our WH question. What do is next here because my subject is I. What do I, in this case I used need, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? In native speed, this sounds like, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? You might also hear people say, what do I have to do? <laughs> like in uh, like romance movies. Like, what do I have to do to like, uh, I don't know, to make you like me or something like that. What do I have to do? Maybe you'll see that pattern too. So, what do I need to do? Let's break down this sentence now. So, where, WH question, where does she have to go? So, she is my subject. So we use does here. Where does she have to go? Okay? Then, let's look at this one. This is a yes or no question, right? So I removed this WH. Does he need to attend? Does he need to attend? Like, does he need to attend the meeting? Does he need to attend the event? This one, yes or no, right? You can answer with the full question. Yes, he needs to attend the event but just yes or no is great. Okay, one more then. Why do we have to come? Why do we have to come? So, question word, why? Do plus subject, why do we have to come? So maybe kids would say this to their parents, like, ah, why do we have to come to your event? Like, or why do we have to come to this? Maybe kids don't wanna go to something. Why do we have to come, okay? All right, so these are our example questions. I'm looking for your example questions. I'll start with you guys over here on Facebook now. Okay, where are you, Facebook? All right, some examples are coming in. Um, Cesar says, what, when do you need to do your homework? Okay, when do you need to do your homework? Good. Uh, Nang says, when do we have to go there? Oh, maybe when do we have to go? Yeah, okay, when do we have to go? When do we have to leave, maybe? Um, Milena, what do you need to study here? Okay, maybe what do you need to study? Mm, yeah, okay, could work. Rosa says, why do we have to study? <laughs> maybe that's a good example sentence for children, yeah? Kids, they don't want to do their homework. Oh, why do we have to study? Okay, uh, look, all right, I see a lot of the same people sending examples on Facebook. Nicely done, very nice job. I'm gonna try to check some other people on YouTube. Great job, uh, Facebook chat team, okay. Others on uh, YouTube, oh my gosh, there's so many on YouTube, hi, okay. Um, let's see, Haru says, why do I have to do that? Yeah, good one, that's a really good one. Why do I have to do that? Good one. Um, Sylvia says, what do you have to do today? Great one. That's a really good expression to start the day, like with um, someone who lives in your house, like a roommate or your partner or your family member. What do you have to do today? Okay, that's a good one. Uh, oh my gosh, there are so many questions on YouTube. So, ah, I'm trying to read, but the chat's going quickly. Um, what is going on? Where does she have to go, Sylvia? How? Let's see. Uh, some different grammar points. Uh, when do we have, to, oh, Pemba, when do we have to submit our documents? Don't forget this. When do we have to submit our documents? Victor says, does she need, so no S here. Does she need to work tonight? No S there, and then it's perfect. Okay, um, when do we have to meet with them, says Karina, good. Uh, Jeanette says, what, oh, uh, why do I have to do with this class? Mm, I'm not quite sure what that means. Why do I have to go to this class, maybe? Hmm. Uh, okay, lots of examples. Okay, make sure you, don't forget, some people forget this have to, need to, yeah? So, remember, we're asking about responsibilities. Asking about responsibilities. Okay, so, let's move on then to the last point for today's lesson. The last point I want to talk about is this advice kind of pattern or strong recommendation uses. We use have to and need to to give advice and to kind of recommend things, but it's sort of, we use this responsibility feeling to express our strong recommendation. So what do I mean? Here are some examples. When we want to recommend something very strongly, we might say something like, you have to see that movie. You have to see that movie. It's so good. 
I have this word in big letters, yeah? You have to see that movie. We emphasize uh, the word in our voice, yeah? You have to see that movie. So it sounds like you have a responsibility to see that movie because it's so good. That's the feeling here. We also do this with need to. You need to try this dessert. You need to try this dessert. <laughs> you need to try this dessert. So that sounds, again, it's so good, you have a responsibility to try this, okay? So we use the same feeling of responsibility to give strong recommendations, okay? And then, I need to get this promotion. So this is like a personal kind of feeling, a personal, like, oh, it's really important to me. I need to get this promotion. A promotion means a level up at your job, yeah? The same job, but you get a higher rank, yeah? You level up in your job. I need to get this promotion. So how do you know if someone is giving a recommendation or talking about responsibility? Usually when they're doing, um, when they're talking about advice, strong advice, or they're talking about a, a very important personal task or a personal thing, Usually you can hear in speech this sound. If you're reading it, sometimes we do this, we write all capital letters, but generally you can tell, you can understand from the situation, from the context too, okay? All right, so we can also use this grammar point in this way to give advice and strong recommendation uh, sentences. Phew! There are lots of other examples still coming in. Good job, everybody. Uh, do I have to go abroad for studying, not aboard? Aboard means onto a boat. Abroad. Be careful of your spelling there, okay? Mm, others. Um, all right. There are lots of just kind of random sentences coming in. <laughs> so I think that's a good time to end today's lesson. Great work, everybody. Thank you so much for your awesome, awesome example sentences and your great questions. Really, really cool to see so many good uh, examples coming in from all over the world. That's awesome. But we have to finish for today's lesson. So I'll show you today's lesson boards. If you would like to take a screenshot, now is your chance. But um, Okay, so we talked about have to and need to when we use these. We talked about uh, using them for positive statements, and we talked about negative statements. And make sure you use this for reasonably, <laughs> re or rather reasonable expectations in your life. And finally, we talked about making questions and using these for advice and recommendation patterns. So I hope that you learned something uh, and you can use this in your everyday life too. Next week, where's next week's information? I'll be back next week, of course, next week. Next week's lesson will be March 9th. Next week, Wednesday, March 9th at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is New York City time. If you don't know your local time, please use your excellent Google skills. Or you can set a notification on Facebook or on YouTube. Or if you follow me on Instagram, you can find a link and a topic reminder in my stories. I post one there every week. Next week, I'm going to talk about how to explain what you want and what you don't want. So, very important to be able to do this. So, please join me again next week for this topic. Okay? I have to say goodbye for this week. So, thank you, as always, for all of your awesome comments and questions. And thank you very much for liking and sharing the video, too. That was super great. Of course, this was recorded. If you missed anything, you can go back and watch it as soon as I hit the stop button. <laughs> so, check that out. Uh, don't forget to look at the link from uh, the link below the video on YouTube or above the video to check out the free PDF cheat sheets. There are a bunch of new ones there, so go and check those out. If you want to find me on social media, you can also find my Instagram and Twitter from the YouTube lesson description to, to take a look. All right, I'll say goodbye, so have a great week, have a great weekend, and I will see you again 